Hey everyone, Stockton here from Vision Labs. And in this video, we're going to quickly go over some of the new features of the Google tag, what it replaces from the GA4 config and a really cool use case for the new settings variables. So if you have any questions, head on over to visionlabs.co and consider joining the lab where we go in depth on all of these topics and you can have a community and ask your support. All right. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump right in and try and demystify and come up with the best way to use the new Google tag and how GA4 configuration works all into this. So if we come down and take a look, here we have what used to be called our GA4 config. You can now see that the tag type here is indeed Google tag. So it's no longer G Google Analytics GA4 configuration. It is the Google tag. And if we click in, we can see some of the just basic settings here. We have our measurement ID and then there are some configuration settings. There are configuration setting uh, like variables and parameters that you can add. There's also shared event settings and variables and parameters that we can add here. So what do these things mean? How can we best use them? We're also going to be taking a look at the best way to um, use the config and uh, an event. So here we have an event called view item. Of course, we do have to enter in our measurement ID for every single event, which I think it's kind of a downgrade from what we used to. It's a little more work and overall, like things are more complicated, but I kind of see the vision. I kind of see where things are going and I kind of like some aspects that we're going to talk about to improve things here, which will be really cool. Okay. So here we have our view item event. So this is the event and we have different parameters here. So what's the best way we can use these new variables and the config tag and all of these different pieces? Well, the first thing that I think we're going to need to do is instead of always referencing our tag ID here like this, we're going to want to use a variable. So if you haven't already, then definitely go and create a new variable and you're going to come up in the plus here. You're going to choose constant variable. It's down here in the list and you're gonna enter in your measurement ID just like this. This constant variable, now you can always just reference that. If you need to change it for any reason, you just go to one place. You go to the variable, you change it, you're good to go. So here I have one called GA4 measurement ID, and we can go ahead and hit save there. And I'm gonna make sure that all of my events are also referencing the ID. So we're gonna come into the view item event here. All the rest of them should be good to go. So for example, if we look at view item list, it's referencing our measurement ID. Okay, so here we have these. So if we come back to the config, what do these settings mean? The key difference between configuration settings and shared event settings to me is when is the value of these parameters evaluated? Any of the event parameters that you add into this top section, which is the configuration settings, are going to apply to all of the tags on the page. So all of your events are going to inherit the parameters here, but it's going to be a constant value. So whatever value it is when the config loads is going to be the same value that all the events on the page are going to use. So it's evaluated at the time that the configuration loads and then those values don't change. The values down here, so the shared event settings values, these ones are set up here in this config tag, but they're actually evaluated at every single event. So let's say, an event ID is a perfect example. And actually let's set this up. But the event ID, if you had event ID here, then all of your events on the page would inherit the exact same event ID. Because once it's set once, when the config loads, all the events will use that same event ID. If you set an event ID here, then every single event will reevaluate to see what the latest event ID is. So if your event ID is a random number, for example, then at every single event, you'll have a different random number. These will all be inherited. So what this means is that all the tags on the page will inherit both of these values here. Um, but they're just evaluated at different times. These ones are inherited when the config loads and they don't change. These ones are inherited at each event, but it's set here in this config. So let's go ahead and set um, a parameter just to show kind of what that could look like. So let's call this config event ID. And I have a variable here that will give us um, an event, event ID. And here, let's call this event ID. And this is just gonna be our standard kind of event level event ID. And again, the difference is this one will change with every event. So let's go ahead and hit save, and then let's preview this. I'm gonna load up our test site. Okay, so if we go and look here under container loaded, let's go ahead and look at the different variables. So if we go down to that variable that is for our event ID, what did we call it, MV event ID, MV 
unique event that I here it is. So this ends in 6323. Three. Zoom in a little bit. So 6323. Three. And if we look at each one of the events, it changes. 63227. 63293. Three. So it's changed every single time. However, if we go and look at the data that was actually sent with different tags, we'll notice that it would have changed. And actually, we need more events to fire. So let's actually go view another page. Let's do a view item. Here we go. To fully illustrate this roundabout. Here we go. Okay. At container loaded. Let's go find our variable again. MV unique event ID 3197. At the view item event, it's 3271. Okay. Let's check what analytics actually received. So we're going to come to our analytics property here. We're going to go into debug view. We're going to load this up and see what it saw. So at page view here, we're going to have an event ID, which is what we set. Come back down to it. So event ID is set here. Remember, this is the one that's evaluated at each individual event. And then we have the config event ID. So let's go find if we have config event ID in our list here. Ah, here we go. And in this case, I think they should match. So 3197 and 3197. And that matches because both of these are evaluated at that page view. But what we would notice if we go to view item, now the config event ID should not have changed. So this is the same event ID that was at the page view event, but our event ID, that's always fun when this happens. Config identity is 54573197, 54573197, something like here we can see at the scroll event, the config ID didn't change 3197, but here it's 3608. So it did change in that case. Okay, so some anomaly here for some reason, uh, first time I've seen that happen, but that's the idea, right? So anything set at the config event level parameter doesn't change for all of the events on that page because event ID here set at the event level parameter, it does change. Now, instead of having to define a bunch of parameters one by one, just like this, and having to do that in every single tag, they introduced these variables. So now there's a configuration settings variable that we can create and it will just like have all of these uh, different parameters here ready for us. And then same with the event settings variable. So what I propose is a really good way to do this is to create your tag configuration settings variable. And when you reference a variable, it will have this little list, which now shows you what the parameters are that are inside of that variable. So you can kind of see if you want to update or change or modify one of the set ones, you have this thing here. So that's pretty nice. Um, in my Google, like in this tag configuration settings variable, I just manually defined server container URL and send page view. Those are two fields that used to be in the config that now you have to manually specify. So it's server container URL. If you're using server side GTM, you would need to put in your, you know, t.mysite.com in order to send the events to your server domain instead of here. And then send page view is false in this case, because we have another event that is sending the page view. So I don't want the config to send the page view. I have a separate event over here that sends the page view. So send page view is false in this case. And then we've added on our config event ID as a separate. So we have the variable settings, we have a custom one. And so there's a lot of places where you can add parameters now. Here, if we check out what we have for the event settings and we show inherited parameters, we can see that we have that event ID with the variable that will reference the unique event ID and then some other just custom IDs that will be evaluated on every single event. So with every single event, I wanna send in what was the original UTM value for it. And so now what's gonna happen is all of these, when the page loads, all of these parameters in both of these sections are going to be sent with every single event. These ones are going to be evaluated once when the page loads, when the config loads, I should say. And then these ones are going to be evaluated at every single time. Now, I know that these are cookie values, so they don't actually change. So it doesn't really matter. Like those values aren't going to change with events. In fact, what does that mean? I could probably add these ones to up here because they don't change. All right. So now let's talk about one more thing that's pretty interesting at the individual event level specific with e-commerce i think this will work really well if we go to ga4 we look at the view item we're referencing our measurement id dynamically here we've got our event name obviously but instead of having to define in each every single event the e-commerce specific events what we can do is just reference a new tag event settings variable that has all of those parameters there that are specific for e-commerce 
Now this gets a little bit confusing because what this is actually telling us and what this actually means is all of the event parameters that were set in the config, so we had the config ones up at the top and we had the shared event parameters at the bottom, all of those are still going to be sent with this event. So in addition to those parameters that were set there, these event parameters that are set in this tag are also going to be sent. These event parameters here are also evaluated at each individual uh, event. So we have kind of three spots now where these different parameters are, are coming from and being collected. However, I think using a variable in this case makes a lot of sense because then if we ever need to change our e-commerce setup, we can do it once inside of this e-commerce variable instead of having to go to each one of the tags individually. Like let's say our currency variable change be like, oh man, now I have to go to how many tags is this? 14 different tags and change the currency variable. No longer do you have to do that. You can just change it once here inside of the e-commerce variable tag. So now that that's updated, you can see that because I had them there previously, now it's showing that I overrode them, but I didn't. So we could just inherit back to what the original value was and we have all of those now ready to go. One other thing that I think is pretty cool is they give you this check to tell you if it's a known parameter or not. So if there's no check, it's not like a standard parameter from Google Analytics 4. So let's go ahead and hit save. And now with all of these changes, let's go preview things again. Go ahead and hit continue and let's do some more stuff. So we're gonna shop now. We're gonna go view an item. I'm gonna scroll around a bit. We're going to add to cart and we're going to go to view the cart. Okay. So here we are, we got up to like a certain point, we should have a bunch of um, a bunch of events we can go test now. So we'll start right here. We've got view item. If we look at the events here inside of view item, it's a little hard because you can't see all of the events that were set in those three different places. So we don't actually see what event parameters were set in the config that was also sent with this view item event. And we can prove that by going to analytics, the debug. Let's find the latest version here of our view item. Here we can see that config event ID was sent with this event. However, when we view that event inside of GTM debug, we can't see the event parameters that were set at the config here. We can't see that they were sent to GA4, here we go. Here in this view, we have to kind of go look at uh, the variables to see what was actually set. So here we go, if we scroll down, we go to variables, tag configuration settings. So that was in the config, the top one. We have these that are evaluated, are set on every page. Then we have the Google tag event settings. This one was also set in the config where we have the event ID, the config event ID set here. And then we have our Google tag event settings, the e-commerce one that contains all of the e-commerce items. And these were sent because we can see them here. We can see, you know, the test product was viewed. We can see the, all of the different parameters, including the event ID, including the config event ID that was set there. And those should be different in this case. Let's see, 9197, 9197. Okay, so for some reason, the view item is just being crazy right now. Let's look for the, do we have an add to cart one? Oh, here it is. So it should be different between event that he add to cart. So 6197 for view item. And then if we go here, 6197. Did I just set the ver wrong variable here? That is going to be funny. Quick peek. Yeah, I don't know. That's how it works though. So there you go. Let me know if you have any questions. That is the recommended way that I would set up now uh, anytime moving forward is I would have my config for the two different places and then I would have for e-commerce in particular a separate e-commerce event configuration variable in use.